Reaches and Love and Kindness family. This is Reverend Dr. Karen Khadija Davis, folks, host of the Conscious Self Healthcare Conversation Radio Show. Oh, taking a deep, deep breath with you. You are only one decision away from a total different life, just one. Join me and my guests Thursday, January the 27th, 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on innerlightradio.com, the healing frequencies. Our pre-recorded show for 2021, the year-end panel radio show interview. Our first up will be interviewed by Brother X is Dr. B. Cyrus. Join us to see who's up next. We will also share brief talks from visionaries in the field of quantum health and healing. Yes, family, community, and friends, it is the season, it is the time to become your own wellness doctor, to learn anatomy, physiology, a little bit of pathology with the wisdoms from our ancient ancestors, how to care for the human body. Everything you need is within. Step up out of the dark ages of disease care and join us for the year-end panel radio show. Help 
Greetings to you all. I'm Reverend Dr. Karen Khadija Davis, folks, non circular signs of medicine, and host of the Conscious Self Health Care Conversation Radio Show. Thanking you for joining us this Thursday, the 27th of January 2022, as we share with you the year end review show of 2021. Thank you for joining us and sharing this broadcast with a friend. You will hear interviews from our regular guest panelists as they interview one of their special guests on today's program. Sit back, tune into yourself, take your deep, 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 deep breaths, and remember, you are aboard the Friendship Train to Conscious Self Health Care, making Conscious Self Health Care moves. Yes, it's time to be your own wellness doctor. I'm thankful for all our guests that are joining our hosts and having an interview, sharing the most crucial information for them to share with the public and maintaining wellness as we move through these changing times based on the information that we have received since 2019 on the global pandemic. Yes, it is definitely once again time to move beyond a man-made mindset of human consciousness. Step back, take your deep breaths, tune into yourself and know that you got this. You got this when you understand the keys to wellness, to healing, to happiness, success in life starts with you, from you, and through you. Once again, I'm Reverend. Dr. Karen Khadija Davis, folks, non circular signs of medicine, taking a deep, 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 deep breath with you as we sit back and listen and see if any of the information help us move more calmly through these challenging times. I'll be back with you before the show closes. Thank you so much. Up next is our special guest interview by. Brother X, Jamal, and Sister Roxanne. Thank you. Sit back. Take those deep breaths. <sighs> you got this. and salutations here at interlightradio.com the healing frequency we want to invite all of you to, to stay tuned for this segment in the emancipate yourself from medical mental slavery day provided to us by Dr. K really appreciate her giving us this segment and in this segment we're going to talk with a spiritual teacher a healer a metaphysician a herbalist someone that many of you already know or should know of and that's none other than Dr. B. Sirius. Dr. B. has been a friend of mine, my goodness, for go almost 30 years now and uh, we've had a lot of discussions over the years and today we're going to talk about a whole host of issues as it pertains to where we are today. Now it sounds simple but we know there's nothing simple about where we are today. Dr. B. Serious, I want to welcome you here at innerlightradio.com. Good day, man. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. It's really my honor and pleasure. We don't get enough time to do this uh, over the years. Every, obviously, everybody's gone on their own journey. 
when you were here in the Southern California area, we had our weekly programs, and it was very easy for everybody to sit down and get in touch and break bread and brainstorm. So it's really my pleasure and honor to have you here today. Dr. B, again, you're an herbalist, you're a spiritual teacher and guide for many. Uh, you are a nutritional specialist, historian, uh, so many different disciplines that you really specialize in. So I thought you would be the perfect person to have this conversation with about really where we are. But before we get to that, I, I want to put this right at the top. Uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and, of course, how we can contact you. I don't want to get that out the way because we're going to dive in deep after this. Well, you know, I started out in the music industry as a musician, producer, you know, a recording engineer, mastering engineer, which actually catapulted me into the natural health world because of the challenges of, you know, that industry and the stress and the way I was eating and living. So I was, you know, faced with a serious, you know, health challenge, which I was given not long to live. And that made me go figure out how to find, you know, who I was, find out who I was and find out what medicines, foods and activities would actually, you know, help me grow. So that's how I got into the natural, you know, health industry, working to help myself and then my family and then those in the entertainment industry, you know, ultimately. So that's how I got started. And, you know, I'm a co-founder of Elevation Foundation for Abundant Life, which is also ElevationTime.com, ElevationTime.com. And, you know, we offer natural health, you know, research information, uh, you know, um, subconscious we work help to work for people with their subconscious to reprogram that because that's what's creating most of our habits and you know and that's why we're ill is because of the way we think and the way we feel about life so also i'm a master herbalist i've created you know many uh formulas and you know products for companies and for our own self we have our own line of products which are readily available at elevationtime.com okay fantastic so right off the top, I guess before we really dive in deep, I want to give us uh, at least offer you a chance to give us an overview of understanding where we are today as humanity, as the planet, as a people, uh, the ages that we have experienced, meaning where we've come from, where we are currently, where we're going and history. If we don't understand history, I'm assuming we really can't gain clarity about things that are going on today. So from your vantage point, where are we, Dr. B? Well, we're actually at a great place because we're going through, we're piercing through the veil. We're going through the clouds that actually will begin to bring us into this new age. We're in it, but, you know, the realization of it is a, you know, another thing because we still have some of the, uh, the, the vapors of the last energy, the Iron Age or the Rust Age, I like to call it. But there's a thing called the Sidereal Day. The, the star day, the great year, the great calendar, which is 26,000 years. Actually, it's between 24 and 26 because it kind of, you know, nothing in nature is exact. But that calendar is the, the calendar that is used to really quantify where we are. And where we are is a, right now is a very special time because we're in the what they call the springtime of the calendar. We're awakening. New life is beginning. We were in for the last you know, say 14,000 years or 13,000 years, we were in the sleep. We were in the, what they call the fall of man or the dark time. We're in the time where the sun, the energetic sun, right, our spiritual sun is rising and we're waking up from that deep sleep where man, you know what I'm saying, it's control, power, you know, uh, competition, back to a place of more love, more togetherness, more you know, finding harmony and taking peace and turning it into wholeness. So we're at that time. And what's really interesting is every 13,000 years, our whole solar system goes through what's called the photon band. See, the photon band is this big ball of light. It's like a cloud of light in space where there's these beings called the bio photons. Okay, bio photons are, are the light energy that all living things emit. But these beings or these uh, ener energies and entities are in this cloud that our whole solar system goes through every, you know, every 13,000 years. And what happens is the people on the planet, even the plants and animals, they change, they shift. 
well, this particular shift that we're going through now is one to awaken us from the sleep that we were in because these bio photons, they go into our system. They go into our chakras. They hit the solar plexus. They hit the pineal gland, and they turn on the parts of the DNA that were sleeping for 13,000 years, which, which, which is what they call junk DNA. So we're actually being uh, – we are becoming the new beings. We're the Nubians, you see. But the powers that be, right, they know history. They know about this 13,000-year – this is 26,000-year. They know about the all the different ages that we go through where people change. And if you are creating a slave colony, you have to create a situation where you keep the slaves perpetually on the, sla- on the, on the plantation themselves. You get them to even fight for the slave master. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, the black sheep is always attempting to get across that fence and get off the get off the plantation. You know, so this is the time where we all would naturally become the black sheep and jump off the plantation and go and become more telepathic, more loving and work together more in, 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 in you know, in units and back to the village concept. Mm. So those who are in charge kind of know that and they say, well, what do we do to scramble that so we can keep the slaves on the on the plantation? Fear, fear, false evidence appearing real, false expectations appearing real or the anticipation of pain, death or anything. That's fear. You create fear and the people become inferior. Right. And once they become inferior, they have an inferiority complex. And at that point. Whoever the slave masters or the soul catchers or whoever would like to be in control, the conquerors, they got you because they've got the brain. They've got the mindset. They've got the thinking based on fear. And that's where we're at right now. There is a a big push to keep us at the place of being slaves, not only to someone else, but to our fears and to our past. Well, let me let me ask you right here, Dr. B, because there's some outstanding issues that appear to be inflicting and affecting the, the, the world, which is causing this kind of anxiety that you're talking about. Two major things right now, global warming and what they're calling the pandemic. From your vantage point, what is global warming and the pandemic? And, and are they associated? Well, the planet goes through a, uh, a period of, of cooling and heating. It does that automatically. Now, because of the amount of the of animals, uh, 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 domesticated animal in their, in their waste, we're actually heating the environment up much faster because those toxins are putting methane gases and other gases in the environment, which is changing the environment. And right now we've got a we're at a place where if we continue to consume right so many domesticated animals and keep them at these feedlots, we they say we've got between 30 and 50 years before life as we know it can exist. You see, so we're eating ourselves to death. And we could say, well, we could blame the big corporations. Well, no, we have to look at ourselves because you're choosing it. It's what you're choosing. It's our choices. And they just it's a supply and demand thing. So once you stop demanding something, they'll cut the supply. Like right now, you see veganism is huge or plant based. You know, you see it in regular stores now. In fact, I was in a gas station the other day. They had a plant based section in the gas station. And see, this is driven by money. It's driven by commerce. You see, so there is a concerted effort to change, you know, but the heating up of the environment, which I call terraforming, is done when you you come to a place, a country, a planet, and you change the environment and you heat it up. You change the temperament, the temperature to a point where, you know, it begins to to, to destroy itself and you have colony collapse disorder. So this has happened many, many times. In fact, the planet, as we know it, or the people on the planet have been destroyed five times. You see, and what we're going through is the sixth one. Actually, it's, it's four times. We're going through the fifth, you know, apocalypse right now. But that doesn't mean everything is over. That just means that, you know, it's a cleansing. It's a detoxification where you're getting rid of waste. So we begin to see all this stuff right in front of your face now. It's like, you know, you turn on the television or the news. It's like a comedy show. You can't even believe it. It's like, are they really saying this? And then you watch the people who are just going along to get along, living in the days of the week because they're they're dazed out, you know, and they're living in the weakness. They're waiting for the weekend and they wake up Monday and morning and they're sad because they're like zombies. That's not everybody, though. 
Mm-hmm. That's just the, a certain group of what you call the mainstream. There's another group of people who have totally awakened, who are living more in accordance with nature, who are ready to change things. They're doing it. This is a beautiful time if you lean towards what's good about the situation, because in every crisis, right, something really good comes from a crisis or a storm. And we're in that time right now. Is that the role that this quote unquote pandemic plays? Yes, it does. And some people, somebody told me the other day, they said, well, you know, I think this whole thing was manufactured. I said, whether it was or not, it's natural. I said, what do you mean? It's natural for one group to want to control another. It's natural for wolves to need to eat deer. That's natural. I said, but what is happening is, is that it's also naturally causing people to choose, which is a beautiful situation because we become sometimes too complacent, too comfortable, feeling that things are, you know, it's like we're spoiled. It's going to be this way tomorrow. No, you've got to figure out new ways of living, new ways of eating, you know, new ways of, of looking at your day. So this situation is actually pruning. It's pruning, you know, it's the, what they call it, the wheat from the tear. You know, who are those who are really ready to change and do something different? And who are those who are just living in fear and just going along to get along? Dr. B, as an herbalist and a naturopath, what are the issues that you would have with Western, the Western approach to medicine and healing? Well, a Western approach to medicine and healing was based on natural. It was based on herbs. In fact, everything was. But now it seems like it's based mostly on symptoms, treating the symptoms and not getting to the root problem. So if you're not getting to the root problem, the root problem is getting worse. So you can make more and more drugs that you can control and patent, right? You know, something that costs two cents to make you sell it for, you know, a million dollars or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like diamonds, you know, diamonds really don't have much value at all. It's one of the most worthless stones, but because, because now they made it a diamonds, you know, as a girl's best friend. And, oh, if you really love the person, you've got to buy a diamond. So you buy into it. So it's like, you know, it's the metaverse, you know, you believe in it. It doesn't really exist. It's like the monopoly game, <laughs> you know, does it only exists on the board. So the mindset of people is what gives value to something. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So modern medicine, right, is you don't need to feel pain. I, f- I just finished watching this show called uh, Dope Sick, and it breaks down this Oxycontin thing. It's really, really a good series, and it goes through the whole o- how Oxycontin got big. And I'm saying, well, this is like crack and the rest of the things that are going through, you know, black and brown communities. But the difference is this was Caucasian people. And Caucasian people, you know, they were dying. They were getting sick, and they still are because of this, of this smart drug, which, you know, if you don't take enough of it, you're going to feel more pain you did, than you did before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the same thing with modern medicine, it's it's about scaring you. It's it's not about, you know, when you, I was taught for a little while by a Chinese doctor in, in, in downtown Los Angeles, and he was about 80 or 90 years old. And he used to say when our clients come, they could have cancer. We'll never tell them they have cancer. We'll tell them to drink some tea. We'll tell them to exercise. We'll tell them to go make love. Go walk by the ocean. He says you never tell them what the what 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 the worst part of it. You tell them you give them something else to focus on. See, once you have an outcome in your mind and a destination, you know you're going to go through pain. You're going to go through trial. You're going to go through tribulation. If that outcome that you have is 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 strong, you stay crystallized. See, this is called the Christ consciousness because Christ consciousness, Christ really means crystallized imagination. Once you are crystallized on a goal and you become the captain of your vessel, right, then you know there's going to be challenge. There's going to be, you know, pirates on the boat. You know, there's going to be, you know, icebergs out there. Well, modern medicine is looking at a person who is not the captain of the ship. They're not in control of their body. They don't know how their bodies work. They'll eat anything and they never talk about, you know, even like in the pandemic, right? They never mention anything about nutrition. They never mention even the, an orange, eat an orange a day. They don't, they, because that may go down and begin to treat the, or, or work on alleviating the root cause. And the root cause, right, for a lot of us is habits. What we chose to eat, eating the food from slavery. You see, the the emergency of slavery, you had to do certain things. But now that emergency is over, but you still have the mental slavery. So you still, you know, eat what you call soul food. Originally, soul food was food that, you know, fed your soul. 
instead of something that catches your soul and, you know, clogs your blood vessels and creates diabetes, high blood pressure and all those things. So modern medicine's thing is is fear. It's based on fear. It's based on symptoms, alleviate the pain, make it look like it went away. You know, it's not based on true love and true caring, you know, and this is why they, you know, those, those pharmaceutical companies are so powerful because people don't want to feel anything and they want a quick fix. Right. They're not really ready to do the real work. And those who are ready to real, do the real work are the ones who become the captains and the leaders right. and the chiefs of the new world. You know, in keeping with the theme of this uh, segment and the program today, Emancipate Yourself from Medical Mental Slavery Day. What are some of the basic steps we can take to heal ourselves and to maintain good health? Number one, each time the seasons change, you detoxify. I'm not talking about just a colon cleanse where you do a weekend colon cleanse and go to the bathroom three times and, you know, clap. We're talking about like a 28 day cleanse, because as I mentioned earlier, everything is based in cycles, what they call circadian rhythms. The body, it, if it heals itself, feeds itself rebuild cells all in a 28 day period it's a 28 day a month a moon cycle so when you detox within a moon cycle for 28 days then you have the deepest you know levels of healing and rejuvenation of the body so you know i, I created many years ago this you know the elevated total body program which is about parasites the number one issue people have is parasites even in politics and the people that you think are running you they're, they're parasites. They use your energy. You do all the work and they sit back and, you know, you, and drink your energy. That's the matrix. You see, so when we detoxify our body, we help to get rid of those parasites, the superbugs. I'm not talking about just the ones in your colon, the simple ones. We're talking about the ones that live systemically through your body. And one of the biggest ones, Jamal, today is called toxoplasma. Toxoplasma is the, called the mind control parasite because it gets into the amygdala, right? That's the part of your brain that helps you process, right? In process fear, anger, your emotions. It also helps you deal with your perception of things. When this parasite is living in the amygdala, right? It controls your triggers. You know, they show you something on television and all of a sudden you're scared and upset. It didn't even happen. They didn't come to your door. Nothing happened, but it keeps you in a fear-based mindset. You see, if the people are in fear, they're inferior, and they have an inferiority complex. So this parasite, right, it starts off in, the, in, in a cat's brain, and it gets in the cat's poop. When the cats poop, mice, right, mice and rats eat cat poop, which I know it sounds weird, but they do. When they eat it, they get the toxoplasma, the larva of the toxoplasma. It goes to their brain, and then the mouse or the rat doesn't even think it's a mouse or a rat, so it never runs from the from the cat. So it's like it's the cat. The cat just walks up to the mouse and eats it. Oh gosh, okay. Because it can't think on it can't think on its own anymore because it's it's got this parasite. You see, so toxoplasma got into the feedlots because if you go to the feedlots, there's nothing but cats and rats. Why? Because it's poop and it's trash. You see, this is like one of the most uh, unhealthy places probably on the planet, a feedlot. So I asked the farmer there, or he, like, he's not really a farmer. He's the, the, the director. <laughs> why, why do you let these rats in here? He says, well, what do you mean? He says, you can't stop rats from being here. Rats can come in, and whatever there's rats, there's cats. So all over the ground, you have feces and all this mess from the animals, and it's just you know deplorable. Well, in that is toxoplasma. The farmer tells me, he says, well, you know, yeah, they get a little toxo, they call it. They get toxo, they got toxo brain. That's why, they, that's why they don't run away. It helps to domesticate the animals. They will not run away. I'm like, what? He says, yes, toxo. He, and he also mentions, he says, I, he says, I think they used to get that to the military back in the day. He says, what would make you, cause you to run towards a bomb or run towards gunfire? He says, you're mixed up in the head. That's toxoplasma. I'm like, whoa. Look up toxoplasma, and this is what they say 70 to 80 percent of the people have toxoplasma. It's not just because you have cats. It's because you live in a society where you're eating foods and you're living a life that's toxic. So toxoplasma is controlling a lot of people's minds. So we figured out, you know, many years ago, along with Dick Gregory, you know, I worked with him for many years, and we said, we got to go after this toxoplasma. How do we do it? 
So that's when we created this special systemic program, which is a 28 day program, which works to detoxify the body totally, you see, and rejuvenate the body, not just cleansing, but also put nutrients back. But one of the main thing is the help to to uh, to eradicate toxoplasma and other parasites that are actually controlling our daily activities. You know, in keeping with that, in terms of uh, uh, injecting good nutrition into the body, at this point where so many of us are now questioning the uh, virility, if you will, of the food that we eat, are you of the opinion that no matter how good we eat, whether we're a vegetarian or a vegan, we need supplements of some type? Of course you do, because the soil, you know, most of the top soil in North America is gone. It's down by the equator. You see, so you're not getting enough nutrients. And you really need minerals, even to make vitamins and all of those things. You need minerals. And there's not enough minerals like iron. There's not enough iron in our soil. If you don't have enough iron, then your cells are not going to be strong. Your body can't carry enough oxygen. It can't heal itself. So the average person in North America is dealing with some level of anemia, you see. And then, you know, you go to the doctor, they give you ferric oxide, which is rust, and now you can't use the bathroom, and it's doing the opposite of what you like it to do. So there are natural forms of, of iron that, you know, like in plants like sarsaparilla, and, you know, and elderberry. But it's true. You've got to get a supplement because even the food, if it's organic, I don't care if you're vegan or raw or Whatever, you're still not going to get enough of the nutrients that your body really needs, especially if you're above the equator or below the equator. That's going to really make your body, you know, be at its best so we can live a a long, healthy life and stay viable. You know, you need certain minerals. Mm, Okay, fantastic. Got a couple of more questions here. We're just about out of time for this segment. And again, we appreciate Dr. K giving us this time doing this special Emancipate Yourself for Medical Mental Slavery Day. The big questions of the day, Dr. B, for so many of us, vaccines and we'll call it the juice. In the event that one has the juice inside of them, give us your recommendations and also just your perspective on vaccines in general. I, in all my years and all my studies, still don't understand what a vaccine truly is and what's really in it. It's a mystery to me. Now, I do know that there is a group of plants called vaccinum, which it seems like this is what they're attempting to do. These vaccinums are berries like blueberries, elderberries, bilberries. They actually give the body the energy electrically. They're they're very small. They're superfoods. They're so they're dense and have all of these super nutrients, which supercharges your immune system. When do they come? Spring and fall. Spring and fall, you have these berries, you know, and these berries actually become, right, your protection. They become a part of your immune system. They've got a lot of the vitamin C's and the quercetins and the zinc and all these things they're saying to take. They're in the berries. So it's it's that's to me the natural vaccine, you see. So uh, I'm not sure technically, you know, even as a, you know, as an herbalist and as a scientist, what they're talking about. So I don't even study that. I study what's natural. We've been here for millions of years without that. How did we survive? And the doctor told me one day, he said, well, Dr. B, herbs don't work. I said, why don't they work? He said, because there's no, been no human trials. I said, well, people have been taking them for millions of years. They weren't humans? He says, not really. And I thought about it. We weren't humans. Humans are man-made slaves. <laughs> we were people. We were tribes. So we have to kind of go back to what we naturally ate, how we naturally lived, and realize that our emotions have a lot to do with our immune system too. And if you're living in fear, right, you got the virus of the mind. The virus of the mind is will take you out quicker than anything else because you're living in fear. And see, when you are in fear, the blood flow leaves your internal organs. It leaves digestion. It goes to your, what, peripheral arteries. It goes to your legs. It goes to your, to your arms. You're about to run. Because maybe a saber-toothed dog is after you. You're going to run. But the fear that we get every day, which creates post-traumatic you know, slave syndrome or post-traumatic stress syndrome. Now we even have complex post-traumatic you know, stress syndrome because you're getting new, new things hitting you every day. That shuts your immune system down. You can't be – if you're in anger, 
if you're in fear, if you're in sadness and grief, your immune system is not working. It is only working when you're in joy, when you're having fun, you know, when you're really feeling good about life, when you have, you know, when you're in the orgasmic state, let me tell you something, your immune system comes on big time. But people are in the opposite of that. You know, we're living in the whole dy dystopian thing. It's the worst thing that can happen. All oh, the world is never going to get back to this. The world was never natural. You know, I mean, the way we lived was not natural, even though it was normal. We always have to change. So to boost our immune system, we eat naturally, love naturally. Talk about instead of talking about the problem so much, we should spend 80 percent of the time talking about solutions. Once you are solutionaries, right, all of a sudden your immune system begins to work correctly. But if you're in the security guard 24-7, like I remember in California, right, a lot of those fires were started by what firemen. Why? Because they wanted to be firemen and there was no fire, so they had to go set one so they can get that adrenaline rush. And they run back to the firehouse and lay down like nothing happened, and they got a time <laughs> timer on, on a fire. You know, they set up a timer. You know, because a lot of times when you – you, you, you live in that security mode. You live in fear mode. You live in struggle. What are you going to do without it? So my question is to a lot of people who are angry and mad about the system. If everything was like you wanted it, what would you do? They don't even they can't even answer because they've been in stress for so long. So the immune system for the average person is done. That is your pre-existing condition. The pre-existing condition is fear, the way you think, the way you live. And you're not seeing situations the way they really are. You're seeing it through a very funny lens. So you get that movie, They Live, back in the day. You watch that movie. Put the glasses on. It's a whole nother world if you could see what's truly happening. This is a shift. Whether it's natural or not, we, we, if we cast blame and all that, then we, we don't have power. It is us that need to change. What we eat, how we live, how we commute, how we communicate. All of those things are going to shift this world. Yes, there's going to be less people. But what are you going to do with your life? You've got to be the captain of the ship. And you've got to find love, peace, harmony, and wholeness. Well, and, and that leads me to our very last question for today. How should we prepare for what comes next, a world after the pandemic? Well, right now we should be collecting seeds, collect organic seeds so that you can start planting things. Even if you're in an apartment and you have a little pot plant seeds you know we need to be pulling together and finding the people who are not living in fear you know talk and communicate get off the internet with some of this talk have secret meetings again create secret sacred societies maybe again you know maybe get a greenhouse if you can be, learn how to grow but cleanse your body detoxify your body every time the seasons change every time the seasons change you have to detoxify your system Otherwise, you're never going to be at peak performance. Your brain is not going to work correctly. You will be sick and you will end up back at the modern medicine, you know, surgical table. There's going to be something that comes up. I mean, everybody, you can't live forever anyway, but we're no longer living even where we should be, which is 120 to 150 you know, years. So those are the things that we should be preparing for and love and get off the news and never mind what they're talking about. And here's my question. When have they ever been truthful? When have they ever given you absolute data? They're always giving you what they call relative data. If you understand what relative data is, that's not the facts. It's just a small group that they tested. And then they make a chart and make one line red and one green and you get scared. Oh, my God, this is the science. No, there's a big difference between science and scientism. Scientism is like a religion. It's a belief. It's all based on theories and theorems. Even a virus. Huh? A virus is mystical. They don't really know what a virus is, just like they don't really understand fire totally. They don't understand electricity. They don't understand gravity. They don't they, they all of them. They, they all disagree. Right. On what gravity is gravity, the thing that holds us on a planet. So all of a sudden now they know all about this one thing. They don't know. They're guessing. They're trying it. And then you become the beta tester. They're testing it on you to see what happens. Mm. You see? So mm -hmm. you have to go back to grandma. What did grandma say? Eat right. You see, mind your own business. If you ain't got something good to say, don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Say a prayer before you eat. You know, take care of yourself and your family first. You see, those are the things that we have to do now. We have to kind of go back and grab, you know, the things that we used to do for millions of years that have worked for us. 
You know, we are the people of the planet. But those of us who are lost and turned out, I mean, uh, you watch the show Lost. They, they never got found. Gilligan's Island. They never got found. They never got off. Even when they got off the island, they decided to go back. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So if you would like to be, you have to be, do, have, and live as if you already have it. Live as if you're already at your destination and act as if you're already at the destination. You're not waiting for anything. And this getting back to normal, just keep the, just keep it in mind that what you called normal was not natural. You see, right. we have been we have been yeah. eating, you know, very, you know, from the microwaves to the Betty Crockers to the, you know, all of that stuff that we went through that was all about, you know, convenience. That was a problem. We got to get back to doing some real work and putting in some time. Yeah. Like I said, and that's love. Put your hands back in the dirt again. Yeah, I always you know? thought it was very interesting where uh, we want to all go back to something and are now afraid to go forward. We're, we're afraid of the future. Yes. And we're afraid of the unknown. That's what it is. You know, a lot of my clients come to me and they may have cancer, diabetes, dealing with something serious. Right. And I'll ask them, what would they like? And they say, well, you know, I don't want to feel pain. I don't want to have this. I don't. I said, but what would you like? And they said, well, I don't understand what you mean. Do you know it takes almost an hour to find out what a person actually would like? And then they might get to a point where they say, well, you know, I'd like to have a million dollars. And I said, well, that's only 500,000 once you get rid of the tax. You know, once the taxes come in on you, unless you know how to invest it, (laughs) you see what I'm saying, which could cost you 500,000 to figure out how to invest it. I said, so what would you really like? If you could only mention the end result, think with the end in mind, where would you like to be? Oh, I'd like to be on beaches. I'd like to travel to the pyramids. I'd like to just sit in the forest. If we could get to that point where we could focus on what the end result is, what is the desire? And if we could focus on what when we when we leave this planet, what would you like them to say at your funeral about you? Oh, he was afraid of the system and he went down to the church and got the juice. And, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) You know, he was scared of this. He worked his whole life. He never took a vacation. He took care of everybody. He never took care of himself. And his heart attacked him. (laughs) You see? So. We, once we get back to, you know, ourselves, who are you inside or recreate who you are on the inside? Everything changes yeah. and herbs are for the healing of the nation, you know, and not just herbs, minerals. And there's a lot of natural supp- supplements out there. And that's why I started creating supplements, not just based on herbs. And a lot of the things that I use in my in my formulas are not they're, they're, they're not your mainstream things. You You never heard of them before. Because there's more medicine out in nature than people have ever even known. So I don't do anything like anybody else. My thing is to help get rid of mental, physical, and spiritual parasites and help folks become healthy, wealthy, and wise. If you're ready to do that, then ElevationTime.com is the place to come. We do classes and workshops and all those things to help folks do that. Fantastic, Dr. B. You know, I want to thank you so much for being uh, a special guest here on Emancipate Yourself from Medical Mental Slavery Day here on interlightradio.com obviously we're going to have to do this again and do an extended version of this conversation if one can imagine that but Dr. B I want to thank you once again for being a special guest today and obviously we'll be in touch Hotep sir peace my brother Are you at your wit's end because there seems to be no solution to your health care problem? Is it okay for me to say to you that you can have peace of mind, take back control of your health? Are you experiencing anxiety, arthritis, diabetes, cancer, fibromyalgia, high blood pressure, lupus, chronic fatigue syndrome, any fictitious disease? Whatever your symptoms or diagnosis are, there is a conscious solution to transform the cause of your pain, not treat symptoms or mask it. 
no prescription medication, no over-the-counter drugs, no organs removed are required. Take back control of your health by the renewing of your mind. You can create wellness today. Contact Dr. K, 202-248-7749. Visit us on the web www the number four the word sell c e l l l i f e dot com do you feel lost do you feel out of sync could it be that you are experiencing electromagnetic sensitivity yes electromagnetic sensitivity could man-made frequencies interfere with cellular activity and melatonin production? We are beings of frequency, light, and information, and you are your own experience. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of man-made mindset of human consciousness. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Schedule your Nest ProVision Human Body Field Scan with Dr. K. 202-248-7749. Visit the website for sellife.com. The number four, C-E-L-L-L-I-F-E dot com. Have the courage to expand your horizon and reprogram your cellular activities. Call Dr. K for your 15-minute wellness consultation, 202-248-7749. Is it time for a new approach to your health care? Are you ready to leave the dark ages of disease care management and pharmaceuticals? If your answer is yes, Get ready to relearn, rethink, and rewrite your personal health care prescription plan with Dr. K. She is a certified lithologist and Nest health care provider, sharing the new signs of information as medicine and cellular ecology. Did you know that the field of epigenetics states that you are more than just your genes, and those genes do not control your biology? Yes, that's correct. Schedule a Skype phone or office visit with Dr. K and get on board the friendship train to healthcare freedom 202-248-7749 that's 202-248-7749 visit us on the web for sellife.com the number four the words sell c-e-l-l-l-i-f-e dot com hey we got to help one another. Greetings and good afternoon on the Emancipating Yourself from Medical and Mental Slavery Day show. I'm here with Ms. Sandra McKechnie, life coach and public speaker, who will be telling us today about various things. Sandra, are you there? Hey, I'm here. I like that music. <laughs> hey. <The> intro. <laughs> so let's you? begin. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you. So um, let's begin here. So how have you gone about emancipating yourself from mental slavery in the context of someone who has overcome their own double consciousness? So please tell us how your journey began and what led you to creating and offering your double consciousness with two B's seminars. Mm -hmm. And can you please define double consciousness for our listeners who aren't aware of what that uh, concept and the term means sure i'll i'll let you know what about what it is what it means really just simple uh in a simple form that people i hope can understand and then just get into what it means to me and why it's changed my life and why i run trainings webinars learnings let's call them learnings on um uh double consciousness so double consciousness was honed and coined by W.E.B. Du Bois, social reformer. He was like the calendar boy for NAACP for well over 20 years. Uh, he was born in 1888 and died in 1963 and let, coined this concept. It was around for a long time, right? Psychologists, psychiatrists were using it. But it, what it means is two streams of thought 
two social identities. I use the peace sign. I hold that up when I talk about double consciousness because there's a gap there. And it, and it's really referring to the peoples that uh, are indigenous brothers and sisters of the Americas as well and are indigenous brothers and sisters of the big, big largest continent on the planet and if Africa. So it really... It refers to two streams of thought, two social identities, refers to people that were assimilated upon trauma. So whether it's the sub-Saharan trade, transatlantic slave trade, apartheid, colonization, imperialism, people that came across the trade and and the others, right, our brothers mm-hmm. and sisters. So that two streams of thought has a lot to do with the fact that when you look at the peace sign, you see that gap, that gap. Yes, it's referring to those that were assimilated upon trauma for hundreds of years and how they show up and how why they show up how they show up in the 21st century and it has to do with people that are having a challenge just having finding a sense of self when you close that peace sign there you go you get that sense of self and so we push back against that so our trainings or the learnings that we do, we're doing another one coming up in February, February 6th and February 13th. This one is called Double Consciousness Fundamentals. And I put it under cultural sensitivity and awareness trainings. So um, ca- allowing our registrants, this is what happens in our trainings, allowing our registrants to just tap in to their conscious on awareness. So becoming aware that they may not be aware in relationship to our marginalized peoples and, and so-called minorities that they may not be aware of what we went through and may have certain stereotypes that they need to connect um, going back hundreds of years, 21st century, 20, 19, 18, 17, say we're in the cusp of slavery, and just making that connection so the stereotypes, this can, you know, eliminate, <laughs> hopefully, diminish some of the stereotypes or the wrong stereotypes. And also in the trainings, the other point of it is, um, or the learnings is causing people to deconstruct mindsets with an opportunity, a safe and brave space to look at some stuff, not destroy, but deconstruct and then reconstruct some mindsets. OK, so how did you go about emancipating yourself from mental slavery? Like how what how led to up what, what to led to this creating? Yes. Yes, this was this was pretty powerful. Okay, so I married white, and nothing wrong with marrying who you love and all of that, right? Um, but what what happened was a, that was a precursor to where I was going, and I didn't recognize that. So we're not together now. But what happened was this: I was all my life, most of my adult life, people were saying, you know, you you, you present white. You're like you're white. You're so white. You know, my sister girls that you know, and I'm I later understood. Blackness doesn't have to do with putting on a dashiki. Dashikis are lovely and going down to the local Afro fest and buying some products. It's hard work. So when you have been assimilated upon trauma to be like um, to assimilate into a so-called dominant culture, sometimes you're really you really don't know who you are. So um, for me. What happened was I collided with W.E.B. Du Bois, um, his book, The Souls of Black Folk, and he has another one, The Philadelphia Negro, and a lady by the name of Dr. Joy DeGruy, sociologist. This woman is, uh, she's degreed to the nines and an amazing woman doing this work. She has a video called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. It's an hour and 20 minutes and change, an easy watch, but it is dense. It's thick. I collided with W.E.B. Du Bois and, um, Dr. Joy DeGruy. And I wept because I didn't realize, I didn't identify with my people, my black people <laughs> in mm-hmm. the 21st century. I didn't, I thought logically, logically we know we didn't just show up here in the 2021st century, but there's a disconnect because so many, the Jewish people own their ma'afas, their horrors. A number of groups, Japan owns theirs. We were sort of taught or assimilated to think no 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 pull up yourself by your bootstraps forget all about that and then just move forward but what we are we go through in our trainings is you can't go forward you will continue to assimilate you will chameleon into everybody else but who you were intended to be unless you go back and own or ancestors or forefathers or dr martin luther king's or malcolm little's aka malcolm x owned what all of these people did for us and that they didn't pass away. They didn't fight for nothing. 
So I went, we went back, I went back personally and I wept recognizing that I had somebody back there that was raped, that looked like me, somebody back there, you know, that they say I look like or belongs to me in the 21st century, closing that disconnect so I could get healing, closing that disconnect so I could come back into the 21st century. We got, we got, so we go back in our, in our trainings or learnings, we go back and we get the answers. The answers are difficult. There we have, we have, excuse the bywords, white people, black people, <laughs> all kinds of people, right. Latinx, we have Islam in the room, people, a lot of people pass through these trainings, teachers, you know, they have the educational sector, social workers, human services, people want to understand what am I missing? I've been told, I've, uh, I've attended um, cultural sensitivity trainings, but this is different. It's going back and doing something that we are taught implicitly not to do. Just, just pull up yourself by your bootstraps and move on. Not looking at the fact that there, we had psychological castration, economic castration, and what does that do to a group of people? What does that do to a huge group of people, right? People that build the Americas. What does that do to these people? And, of course, on par in a lot of this is our indigenous sort of the American Indians and our First Nations individuals and so on. So this is huge. But I collided with this because I was presenting white. I was acting white. We have this way in us that we don't want to say it, but I want it to be white. You know, they say white is right. Black, get back. Brown, stick around. But white is, seems to be the thing that's going to cause our children to have a better life. We can have that white picket fence. But God forbid that you connect with your lineage and your forefathers and your ancestors. So I went through a lot of uh, tr- it was very transformational for me. And I wept over and over again. The more research I did, the more I looked at. And then I did a PowerPoint. I, I kept talking about it to my friends. <laughs> You're one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I kept talking yeah. about it to my friends. And a friend of mine, she works at a major agency here in Toronto. And she says, you need to put a little, just do a beta test. Because she, she heard me talking about it and she said, you know, you probably need an audience. You need to share this. So I got a few friends together. I put it together. I did my PowerPoint. I was finished. And that same lady who helps me right now, who is who does these uh, learnings with me, um, she just said, yeah, we need to book you because we need this. I, I now they're now calling me back for a contract and coming up in the new year, a huge contract for me. And I'm so I'm moved by it Wonderful. because they just they, they looked at it. It works. Um, and we just kept I guess kept doing research on it. But it touched my life first. And that's the biggest thing. I didn't think I needed it. I didn't think I needed it. Even this is my second marriage. I married white. The first marriage to a black man had no clue what that's supposed to look like. We have no clue how our marriages look like. And then I looked at a man, a man by the name of Amos Wilson, and he was speaking about what relationships kind of look like for us, that we, we loved, you know, soul to soul. We didn't just fall in love like other groups may, may teach us or we have learned, but we've learned the wrong way to love each other. And the rest, all of that other stuff is gravy, like it just falls into place. But we love soul to soul. And so I learned a lot about this, and um, this changed my life. Wow. So generally speaking, um, as someone who's also a life coach now, because mm-hmm. you've added you've added that to your um, to your repertoire, yes. uh, with the with the ongoing pandemic situation, have you noticed a commonality amongst the mental health concerns with your clients? You mean in terms of everybody or African? In generally, Canadians? generally, okay. African Canadians and whoever is your client. Because I mean, I'm, I'm taking it there's probably more um, Caucasians up there in Canada. So um, yeah, there is, there is. But here's the interesting thing: <laughs> I, I for for a few years I support people in social justice. I went to coaching Canada Coaching Academy because I wanted to. Um, when I was doing my work, when I was doing my the webinars, these these learnings. I wanted to hold space for people that um, went consultations right around it. And I wanted to learn how to do that, how to really listen, how to really ask questions. And um, but what happened was that coaching, I left coaching looking, I challenged sort of by my teachers and um, they had me speak at Canada Coaching Academy because my question was, wait a minute, how are people showing up? People want to go and coach everybody. Well, I don't agree with that. Any and everybody. I think there's major groups that have gone through some horrors on this planet. 
um, whose land as we I'm here in North America that I'm sitting on. And for coaches, I'm not saying that if somebody comes in to do a landing call and you're, you know, their client, their coachee, that you have to do a land acknowledgement if it's an indigenous person. But a coach should have the mindset of acknowledgement or do a 101. You don't have to do a degree on it, but understand who is in front of you. And as, and blacks, indigenous, one should know, wait a minute, uh, what are you coaching if you're not aware of what's happened to these peoples? What lens are you looking through? So now I've challenged that lens. I ended up uh, that lens. I ended up presenting for my school and I also ended up just uh, sharing this in a capsule that I'm in of coaches in the States, actually, that mm -hmm. um, they wanted more of this, like to understand more of it. So I, I put out that challenge there. So now people are looking at coaching differently because there's a lot of mental health challenges. And so when you think of implicit bias and um, uh, dehumanization, anti anti oppression, <laughs> you know, that's happening. There's a lot of it going on right now. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of our my um, people, black people are not, excuse the by word again, are not really coming uh, unless they feel safe. Who would? I wouldn't. Aren't coming out of the closet, so to speak, with the fact that they are feeling emotionally, psychologically in a deficit. Even now, you know, the saying goes when the dominant group, they got a cold. You know, we have a pneumonia <laughs> when they mm. have pneumonia. We're on life support. You know, when they're mm -hmm. life support, where are we? We're dead. So there's a there's a the one of the reasons I do this is so I can speak to people, non-blacks, absolutely, because a lot of non-blacks are coaching. A lot of white people, European people are coaching. But what lens are you looking through when you put up your shingle and you want to coach black people? You want to coach indigenous brothers and sisters. You want to coach people from Japan. You want to coach Islam. You don't know. You don't have a 101 on what that looks like. And especially indigenous and blacks who are in um, mental health is huge. Um, mm. The challenge right now is it's overwhelming at this particular point with all that's going on on the planet right now. Right. So since you live and work in Toronto, Canada, um, in your opinion, has there been noticeable changes in how people relate to one another so would you say there's a sense of community because you mentioned the indigenous um, mm -hmm. uh, the you know the japanese people and is there that, more of a is, is more of a segregation or would you say there's more of a cohesive um people are, are unifying mm -hmm. well in canada that sort of thing that implicit sort of thing that anti-oppressive kind of spirit that lingers around is very sanitized right so <laughs> you're not getting people saying anything overtly, uh, you know, like explicit bias, but you certainly are experiencing like somebody I'm supporting right now in coaching that's going through some social justice issues. This is huge. Um, the way that this thing is so implied, you can't put your finger on it, but you know it's there. So it calls our people to be more hyper vigilant. even. There's a lot of stress here in terms of job loss. You know, um, a lot of issues we've had consistently, economic castration, academic, psychological, a lot of challenges. Mind you, we got people out here doing wonderful things, making good money. But in terms of these areas of oppression, especially when you get, uh, you know, a lawyer came to me as I was supporting this a particular person, another person, because I went all the way to an arbitrary situation, all the way to arbitration. And the lawyer was took me aside because I could not believe the pushback. Master psychologists sometimes I think we're dealing with in these arenas, but mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that this person, this lawyer said to me, this has not changed. It's almost like, you know, changing the furniture around in a room, putting on a new coat of paint, putting in some mirrors. It looks bigger, but it's the same size, really. Nothing's really changing here. Uh, poli the policies, the acts aren't facts. People are being dehumanized all the way to arbitration and you know fighting for jobs and uh, you have to prove harassment is so hard to prove so I'm looking at when you ask me that question and I think I right now it's very very um, sanitized that's the word I can use mm. um, mm. how that looks it looks really sanitized people are um, are going through a lot right now and coaches are necessary 
especially, but I say they're only necessary for you. I, I'm not going to, I'm, I niched myself though, Roxanne, because I, in terms of, um, I do will, my, my thing is anti, um, what, what do I do? Um, <laughs> Cultural sensitivity and awareness. So a cultural awareness, anti-bias uh, coaching. That's my niche. And I will coach anyone. But I want people to know that that's, this is specifically why I'm here. So that anybody can come. So I'm talking to everybody. It's, you know, blacks. It's not putting it out, say black people. No. Because we started this together, right? <laughs> you know? Right. Well, way right back in the time warp, I wasn't there by myself, right? Um Yes, I was, I didn't bring myself to this point where, you know, of, of dehumanization, but we can take responsibility for it. But what I'm saying is, uh, coaches on this, in, in, in this, because of this particular topic, it's so necessary for us to have the right mindset first before we go in there to support other people's lives and we right. don't know anything about them. <laughs> right. So in, in your opinion, um, where's humanity in general heading? Like, where do you think we're, wow. we're going right now? Wow, wow, wow. That's a big topic. Um, I find that because I'm around people now that I know who I am and I have such a affinity to, um, to my group, I do. I have a, but a, a care for all of humanity. I'm noticing faith is a big, big, big issue right now. Connecting to our, our forefathers and what they believed, uh, believing in faith, our God, trusting, having the right attitude. Uh, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear having these, some certain principles, even in how we're directing our children in this time of distress. Um, there's a lot of people, I spoke to somebody this morning, and people are in distress out here, emotional and psychological distress. So if you did not have an area of faith in your life before this, and you did not have people in your life that you could discuss the values and the virtues of humanity, as 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 we believe as a people, it was fundamentally intended to be, uh, I see there's people are falling apart out here, mm. like seriously psychologically people are fractured out here more than ever yeah. i have a number of people that are working in social service field and you would not believe how much people are right now uh throwing their hands up and said i've had enough of this somebody this morning i have i've had enough of this i'm done with this let this be over well you may have had enough of it but it's that doesn't mean that things are going to change anytime soon so it means that we are, we have, we have to be, I love this inner light radio. That's what we have to have. We have to have some inner light right now mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so that we can spread some love yes. out here and strengthen people. And it's, and we can do it. Those of us that can, you look at, I've known you for how long and I just love you because <laughs> we've been you. through some stuff <laughs> together. And even right now, I feel like I can do that with you. Um, so strengthen your friendship, strengthen your relationship. Community, community is more huge, important now than huge ever. Huge than ever. And recognize your friends that you might have to be honest with them about some stuff, but lovingly, you can do that. And we can get to a place that we can handle some of this. And I might have to pitch you some faith so that you, you know. <laughs> Because so that we can really tap in spiritually and and really look at that inner light and get it out there for each other. Care right. for each other. Exactly. Exactly. Now, is there anything else you'd like listeners to know? Well, I would love listeners to join me in my um, in the opportunity to be a part of our learnings. It's called Double Consciousness. We have a Double Consciousness Fundamentals and a Double Consciousness Advanced. And we have a really beautiful special right now on that uh, training. And we would love people to get into it if you register before December 31st. It's pretty much it's less than half price. But we would really love people to join it, not just because of the training and the price and monetizing it, but. It really is a fabulous training. You've been there, girl. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so please let please let listeners know how they can contact you and um, yes. and what other services you can provide. Okay, I would love people to join me, to to just send me an email at double consciousness um, double consciousness at gmail dot com. So it's double with two b's. Double consciousness, all small, at gmail dot com. And um, I yes, I'm also a certified life coach, and I, I'm also singer songwriter. We've connected with that over the years. That's kind of a, the, a core part of us as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that that's what I do. Um, I also have a book. I'm part of an anthology, and it's called the 
Rising Eagles. You can get that at Amazon. The um, the Kindle is out at the moment, and I would love people to go and look at that. It's a fabulous book, and I think it'll really – it's a, uh, it's actually a book about overcoming. It's called The Rising Eagles. would love you to be a part of that, too. Wonderful. So thank you for – your support here today and participating on Dr. Karen Davis folks emancipating yourself from mental and mental slavery day show on the inner light radio, the healing frequency it was my pleasure. I thought it was great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Karen Khadija Davis folks, host of the Conscious Self Healthcare Conversation Radio Show. And you are tuned in to our year in review panel interview radio show for twenty twenty one. Thank you so much for joining us, sharing this broadcast with a friend and listening to the messages that our hosts co hosts are sharing with their special guests. Taking a deep, 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 deep breath, tuning into yourself as we do every Wellness Wednesday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, helping you shift out of chronic disease, care, stress. And yes, family, community, it is a time for you to do something new, something exciting with the way that you take care of your health because you are in control you make the decisions you can learn the things you need to learn to understand how your body is operating the ways that you are allowing your body to operate and what you can do for your body to be the best that it can be for you while you're here on planet earth this is a wonderful time we see how medicine has advanced itself it used to take decades for them to so-called create something to cure whatever they ought to work with or to assist you whatever they created in that realm of viruses they're doing it in record time now so now you can do things in record time for yourself we know 100% that it's definitely time to step up out of the dark ages of disease care, of health care. It's a new frontier. Everything is so exciting. And you don't need a doctor to tell you what's going on with your body. Once you learn anatomy, physiology, understand how the body communicates, how each system communicates, and what you're doing for it to not be at its most optimal. And here, family, community, and friends, as I share with you every Wellness Wednesday and doing this special broadcast, is how you are determining things, how you are looking at things. It's a state of consciousness. What state of consciousness are you going to put yourself in right now? In these times that they want you to be what? Depending on a medical system, depending on a medical doctor that's tied into their truth. They won't let them share anything with you that's going to help you take control of your health. Come on family, step up, rise up. Become your own wellness doctor. That's why I'm here on the friendship train to help you make those conscious self health care moves. Reach another level of wellness. We're talking about vibrant living through living vibrantly. Yes. A great person once said, right thoughts poured into consciousness will eventually purify it. Well, family, community, and friends, we've been telling you for a long time in this holistic, alternative, quantum health and healing information for health care. How to better take care of yourself, taking that responsibility. So come on, family. Put the right thoughts. Pour it into your consciousness. It will eventually purify itself by Ernest Holmes, and you can do the things you need to do for yourself because family community and friends as we celebrate one of our great historic figures 
Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I have a dream. The dream. I have a dream today, this year, 2022, as we look back on 2021 and look forward to how we're moving. I have a dream today. I have a dream today that you and I will take back our righteous thinking. Did you see? I asked you to make a paradigm shift in your thinking about your meals and your health care right now. So wake up everybody. Time to think a new way. Come on family. Step up out of the dark ages of health care. Yes. You are in control. You don't just listen to medical doctors because you know they've been saying these things for years and years and years and years and years. And all they do is put them on med- more medication, more medication, more medication. No, family. It's in the states of consciousness. It's how you work with your body. It's what you're putting into your body, that fuel. Taking that deep, deep, deep breath all the time. Connecting with the most powerful system in the body, the lymphatic system. That's why we're here to help you. The lymphatic system is the purification system of the body. Yes, it purifies that immune system that they want you to hold on to like it is the best system in the body. They all work together. All systems are the best systems of the body. The lymphatic system, along with you and the way you breathe, breath of life. That's why we say what we must understand is if we are going to restore our bodies to health, Then we must face the fact that there are no diseases, so there are no cures to be found. Yes, family community, that's true. Don't say I have this disease. Don't say I have this virus. Say I have cellular malfunctions. Cells will malfunction when not given the proper materials, the raw materials that they need to do their job. To work together in harmony and peace. That's the fact, family. No diseases, cellular malfunctions, things will occur. What are you going to do to self-correct? That's why on this show we talk about self-love, self-care, self-respect, self-worth. Come on, family. It's all about what you're doing for yourself. So, do you have a disease? No diseases. You see, the name of the disease means nothing anymore. What you are experiencing is an Self-organizing breakdown. Self-organizing breakdown. That's why we must find and take back our righteous thinking. No one's approval do you need to become your own wellness doctor to understand what you need to do. Lord knows there's a plant. There's a there's a plant for everything that we need on this earth. Nature is our answer. To what we need for self-correction. A little bit of understanding takes you a long, long way. So family, community, and friends. Don't give your power to people, places, or things. I said don't give your power to people, places, or things. I say stop giving your power to people, places, or things. You are in control of your life. You are in control of your life. Live by his words and keep a loving mind. You see, they say God granted you the right to a good life. God granted you the right to a healthy life. He knows cellular malfunctions will happen. But he knows what you need to do to keep your state of balance. And yes, that time may come. That time will come. And when it comes, you'll be ready for it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And know that he granted you the right to a good life and a healthy life. And you live the good life. And you live the healthy life. And you're happy and joyful when that time comes. So stop trying to earn the right. You inherited it by the will of the universal frequency of life known as God, Allah. Any man-made name you want to put to this energetic spirit and vibration of life. Yes. I say to you all, as I say to myself, just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. That's why we're on this train ride. We take this train ride and we're stopping everywhere and we go on every location and we're assisting people. We're sitting back, relaxing, taking a deep breath, tuning into themselves. Yes, and understanding the power of self-care. 
Yes, indeed. Got to have that self-love because you are in control. And I am so excited. You know, wonderful conversations that Brother Jamal had with uh, Dr. B. Cyrus. Great conversations that um, we had with um, Sister Roxanne and uh, Sandra. Oh, the double D's talking about William E. B. D. Both. Hmm. Come on, family. We got some information. And there's more for you archived in my YouTube station point. K Davis F on YouTube.com. That's right. It's time for us to sit back and listen to some powerful shows to help us reunite, unite within ourselves to be assured that we are our own wellness doctor. Doctors don't have the last say so. Doctors don't have say so. That's why the field is ever changing right now. Functional medicine doctors. Oh, we got all kinds of doctors now. Even the medical doctors are walking away from the way they were trained, the way they were taught. You got some still over there just holding on. But I tell you what, use their tests to make you more powerful. And then there are so many other great tests out there for you to use to understand what's going on with your body from the energetic quantum well ram of understanding down to the physical ram of understanding of what's going on with your human body. It is so simplistic for you to take better care of yourself. So don't be afraid to sit back, relax, and take better care of yourself. You know, the human body is an electrical being, and you are an electrical being. The light processes have been found to generate electrical fields in every organism that has been examined. And the delicate balance distributed of minerals in and around a living cell, whether plant or animal, humans, counts for its electrical properties. Science has proven that the human body is an electrical being. Our thoughts waves are electrical. The energy coming from the eyes are electrical. Our muscles work by electrical impulses from our brain. If someone is angry with you, they don't have to tell you. You can simply feel it. Feelings get the blessings. Feelings let us know everything that's happening. The sodium potassium pump have to tell you. You can feel it. You can feel it. The sodium potassium pump produces the electrical energy that makes it possible for a person to stop, start, and speed up an electrical train by thinking about it. That's the way we do our own bodies, family, community, and friends. Taking that deep, 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 deep breath. See, energy that makes it possible for a person to stop, start, and speed up an electrical train by thinking about it. Turn a wheelchair with electrical energy coming from the eyes. Activate a typewriter with the electric energy produced by the forehead muscles. And operate a bionic arm. Yeah, that's why they want us to turn into the bionic man, woman, and child. They want to put all these electrical components in your body so they can operate them. Come on, family. We're here to be human beings. We're not here to be uh, IT uh, within our own bodies. We, we know what to need to do. We, we, we know what we need to do. That static, that, that, that confusion, <clears throat> let's clear it up. That's why you want a friendship train today. Let's clear it up. The whole body works on electrical. Off the energy produced by the sodium potassium pumps in every cell. In essence... The human body is an electrical being once again, and your health, strength, and endurance depends upon the energy current that runs through your body. So what are you doing for your body, family, community, and friends? What are you doing for your states of consciousness? Don't let this confusion take a hold of you. Bring your body down. Don't let it happen. And if it is, come on aboard the friendship train once again. 
ride with us every wellness Wednesday. Again, go back and listen to some of the shows on the YouTube channel, K Davis F, and visit our website, ConsciousSelfCare.com. And if you're ready for the future in healthcare, for you to be your own wellness doctor, Come on, step up to quantum health and healing with me with the Nest Health Wellness System. One of the best systems out there that reads the energetic body field and the field that is around each and every cell. Go to my website, energy for life all one words, the number four, energyforlife.com, forward slash or front slash to some people. P forward slash Karen Davis folks all one word F O U L K S step up do the voice scan from anywhere in the world use your microphone on your computer or your cell phone I will open up the scan for you to see to look at for three to five days you can study what your body field is saying to you you get all this information when I release it in your portal for you to understand and 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 tune into the new frontier in healthcare. everybody else is doing it Western medicine is doing it they're using all the electrical impulses in your body to do it they just don't want you to do it but you know family community and friends we're all here today on this special broadcast letting you know that you can become your wellness doctor and you can reverse any situation that you're currently in right now if you so choose to you have the power to do just that taking that deep 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 wonderful breath and thank you so much for joining us on a friendship train and stepping up from the dark ages of disease care and becoming your own wellness doctor. The arc of self-healing and self-help where we make conscious self-health care moves. You see, mental observation view is essential for self-success. Take a moment and view right now in this fresh moment in time what you have been doing and what you are doing and what you may be doing because you can always take a breath. Step back and say, wait a minute, I'm not giving my power away anymore. I'm making the right choices, doing the things that I need to do for myself because everything vibrates and nothing rests. There is a natural law that is called the law of vibration. It is a natural law because it is something that happens in nature without a need for machines or people to make it work. It simply exists on this planet and throughout our whole universe. The law of vibration explains the difference between the physical and the non-physical. It explains the difference between mind and matter. The law of vibration explains that everything vibrates and nothing rests. Everything is energy. Your body is electrical. And every organ has its own frequency and vibration. Quantum physics suggests that we are part of a great and vibrating universe. Thought is one of the strongest forms of vibration and therefore very powerful. What are you thinking today? If we are going to change our mindset, our health, our life, it must be based on new programming. Or we will fail in our efforts to change. Family, community, and friends all aboard this special train ride. Step up and out of the dark ages of disease care. To a new revolution in health care. Will require you to edit your viewpoint, your belief, and your current understanding of the medical health care system. And health care and prevention. You see, family, community, and friends, the Pastorian Middle Age is over. Even though we are still surrounded by Pastorians, you can accomplish this reprogramming not by conforming to this world. Listen to me, family, community, and friends. We do this by the renewing 
of our mind. So be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and leap into the new signs of quantum health and healing and join us every Wellness Wednesday on the Conscious Self Health Care Conversation Radio Show as we share with you how to be your own wellness doctor and step up to the new signs of information as medicine. Sincerely, information giving you the verbal information, giving you the written information, but informational medicine. Information medicine that helps your cells communicate and talk to one another while you feed the human body the right vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and proteins. Family, community, and friends, thank you for joining us this year. Thank you for sharing with a friend. Coming back and listen to the broadcast anytime that you can, that you need to, right at youtube.com forward slash K. D A V I S F right there and visit our website consciousselfcare.com C O N S C I O U S E L F C A R E dot com and our energetic wells website www period energy for life one word energy the number four life dot com forward slash P forward slash Karen K A R E N Davis D A V I S folks F O U L K S and I'm smiling so brightly and I'm smiling so strong because family community and friends we are doing it as humans we are not falling for their games anymore we are not a victim to a virus we are not a victim to a name of a disease we are not a victim to people's words or trying to beat you down and telling you what you can't do you are powerful you are more powerful than you can imagine tap into it and let us continue to show you how Thank you so much for joining us this year. Looking forward to coming back to live shows very, very soon. Because my life has made that shift and change. And I can't wait to share with you woo, what's been going on and how I moved through this storm. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so very much. I'm so honored to share with you and my special guest coming on board the Friendship Train this year. And truly, we miss Brother Keedy today. We miss Sister Debbie. They've always been with me. But I can't wait to interview them this year. So they can share with you how they looked at the year 2021. Thank you family. Thank you so much for joining and sharing this broadcast with a friend. Peace, love, and never give your power to people, places, or things. You are in control of your life. And yes... It's time to shift out of chronic disease, care, stress, and stop. Stop living from a man-made mindset of human consciousness. You got this. You got the divine connection. Peace and love. I'm Reverend Dr. Karen. Wow, family, community, and friends. Thank you so very much for tuning into this special broadcast on the Conscious Self Health Care Conversation Radio Show with your host, Reverend Dr. Karen Khadija Davis, folks, coming to you with the information straight from the non secular signs of medicine. We had a great time today listening to the interviews from Brother X Jamal interviewing Dr. B. Cyrus, Roxanne interviewing Sandra and the information from myself and whoa we got to really thank Reverend Ike for his message that empowers you to know that no one is in control of you better than you. Life on planet earth is always and always as exactly what it looks like. The question becomes What's your illusion? What's your reality? I say the truth is, what state of consciousness 
are you vibrating from family, community, and friends? Reverend Ike has been a part of my conscious creation from the age of eight years. And I, in this 2021 year in review, panel interview radio show with this message from Reverend Ike. Family, community, and friends, join me and my guests as I and we celebrate the 12th year panel radio show conversation of Emancipate Yourself from Medical Mental Slavery Day, April 30th, 2022. Remember, April is Conscious Self Health Care and Lymphatic Sell Your Wellness Month. Thank you and my special guests for joining me on the 2021 Year in Review Panel Radio Show. And remember, step up everybody. Step up and be your own wellness doctor. Because life is a state of consciousness. And ask yourself, are you living from a man-made mindset of human consciousness? Ask yourself that question. When you think you're giving your power away to people, places, and things. I say to you, peace, love, health, happiness, of self-care, self-love, self-respect, and self-worth, all wrapped in self-assurance. I am, once again, Reverend Dr. Karen Khadij Davis Folks, non-secular science of medicine, telling you to become your own wellness doctor. The truth lies within you, family, community, and friends. Like I said, don't give your power away to people, places, and things. And when you do, sometimes a step backwards leads to a new path forward. Because when something bad happens, you have two choices. You let it teach you. Or you let it tear you down. Or you let it build you up. Because sometimes avoiding conflict is the most heroic act that you can do. Like I've been doing since 2000. Boy, 2022. As I share with you, I'm going to let you know exactly how I took that step back to take this new step forward and peace love and harmony so never ever once again give your power to people place and things the truth is clear in my mind and in my mind's eye as a man thinks so is the law of love love laws of vibrational energy God is thought And the Lord is the law by which thought operate. As I think, so am I. I am God, individualized expression as me. I am one with my Father and Mother Earth. What's to be is up to me. It's the way I think about myself. So join me, family. Don't give your power away to people, places, people, places, people, places, and things. Everything is a choice. Life and living is a state of consciousness. Once again, I choose self-love, self-care, self-respect, and self-worth. Woo! Nothing is a process. Everything is a choice. What do you choose today, family, community, and friends? It's time to become your own wellness doctor. So make it a point 
to tune into the Conscious Self Healthcare Conversation Radio Show aboard the Friendship Train, where everybody shake a hand, and make a friend. We only bring you good news on this train ride. Everywhere is a Wellness Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on InnerLightRadio.com, the healing frequency. Thank my guests so much for joining me this year, sharing with you on this year in special review. Woo, family, hug yourself. I look forward to hearing from you. Join me on the Conscious Self Healthcare Conversation Radio Show, sharing your wellness journey, journey to help somebody move from disease care to conscious self health care, making those conscious self health care moves. Mental observation view is essential for self success. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining me and sharing this broadcast with a friend. Reverend Ike, you mean there is a law to fortune telling? Yes. And everybody should learn how to tell his own fortune. Not only that, everybody should learn how to determine his own fate and fortune. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to do it. And you won't have to depend on Madame Zeus, or Snake Oil Sam, to tell your fortune. And you'd better laugh before I tell everybody who's been to Snake Oil Sam. There's a law to everything. There's law behind everything. There's even law behind bad luck. Everything in the universe is based upon law. And the same one law, a Lord that governs everything, governs fate and fortune. And when I say the law of the Lord, I'm talking about the law of mind. And the statement of the law of mind is found in Proverbs, the 23rd chapter and the 7th verse. And we read it together. As a man thinks, so is he. I want just a little more volume here. As a man thinks, so is he. This is the law of laws. It is the Lord of lords. I call it also the cosmic law of mind because it is the universal principle which inevitably causes thoughts to become things according to the nature of the thoughts. And I like this statement, God is thought. And the Lord is the law by which thought operates. Now, in this lesson about the law of fortune-telling, I'm dealing with what I call the miracle crystal ball. And I'm going to show you how to look into this miracle crystal ball and tell your own fortune and determine your own fate. So you can bring me all of the money that you used to take to Madame Zeus to get your fortune told. Now, there is an esoteric meaning to everything, esoteric meaning inner. So since I'm using a symbol of a crystal ball for fortune telling, I want to share that symbology with you. And it's printed on your lesson sheet. Crystal means Clear. Say that. And crystal is a symbol of a clear mind, a clear truth. And the crystal ball means that the truth is clear in my mind. So repeat this statement after me. It's so important. The crystal ball means that the truth 
is clear in my mind. Now, what truth is this that must be clear in our minds? All right, let's look into the miracle crystal ball which I've had drawn here on the lesson sheet. Now, you who are listening by cassette, you will have to use your imagination and see a crystal ball. I call it a miracle crystal ball. Also, I have here on the lesson sheet a photograph of the crystal ball gazer. So say, crystal ball gazer. And I want you to notice that the crystal ball gazer is wearing a pyramid hat, and at the tip top of the pyramid hat is the divine eye, the eye of the mind, indicating to you that with the eye of your mind you can look into the crystal ball of your mind and see what you want to see. So repeat after me. With the divine eye of my mind, I can look into my subconscious mind and see the good that I desire to be, to do, and to have. Now, here is the truth that must be clear in your mind. These are the words of that truth. What's to be is up to me. Say that to yourself. What's to be is up to me. Touch yourself and say it. Come on. What's to be is up to me. Now, I want you to really talk to yourself. I want you to really touch yourself now and tell you, call yourself by your first name and say, what's to be is up to me. Come on. Now, that's the first thing that you see in this miracle crystal ball, and that must become a clear truth in your mind. I'll tell you where I got this statement from. I told you, but maybe you forgot. There's an 85-year young lady in Santa Barbara, California, that writes to me regularly and supports this ministry. And I got the most unusual letter that I ever got from anybody from this young lady because she wrote to me in one of her letters over the past year and said, Dear Reverend Ike, you don't have to pray for me for money anymore. You can stop praying for me to get money because now I have already got enough money. My husband died and left me a lot of money. But pray for my continued health and strength and wisdom and understanding and all of these other good things. And I got a letter from her again, beautiful letter, a few days ago. And she told me, well, Reverend Ike, I've just bought me a new house. And I'm going to be able to walk to church for my new house. Not only that, she said, I went to trade school and I've taken up the trade of upholstering so that I won't get bored and feel old and useless. So there she is at 85 years young. She's not grieving that her husband has gone on. He left enough money. <laughs> She's not feeling sorry for herself. She's starting a new life. She bought a new house. She's taken up a new trade and making herself useful. And she gave me these words in one of her letters. What's to be is up to me. Say that again. What's to be? It's up to me. Now you've got to understand that truth. 
They are those who live by the creed, que sera, sera. Meaning what? Whatever will be, will be. That is a fatalistic lie. No, whatever will be is up to me, up to the way I think. So let's make this statement in this wordology. What's to be is up to the way I think about myself. Shout it. I want you to say it again the second time and really listen to yourself saying it. Come on. What's to be is up to the way I think about myself. Again, what's to be is up to the way I think about myself. Now, you see, this truth must be crystal clear. And you must be careful in the way that you frame your thoughts about yourself. And you must be sure that you are the one to frame your thoughts about yourself. Or your life will be guided by the non-principle of the way the mop flops or the way the cookie crumbles. As a man thinks, so is he. As I think, so am I. Say that. Say it again, as I think, so am I. Say it again. I want you to look at this drawing of the miracle crystal ball again. And I want some more volume here. I, I want the sound adjusted. Fold back speakers as well, please. I want you to look into the drawing of the miracle crystal ball. And there's a statement here by William Ernest Henley, whose pen name was Lord Byron. I love this statement. Repeat it after me. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Now, some people may be thinking and saying, why, Reverend Ike, isn't what to be up to God? Where does God come in in all of this? Ladies and gentlemen, God is thought, and the Lord is the law by which thought operates. So, yes, it is up to God, but God is not someone or something apart from you. That's where the rub comes in. God is I am. Unconditioned self-awareness. But it is up to you, the individualized self-awareness, to choose and decide what you're going to be, to do, and to have. God is not going to decide for you whether you should have a Cadillac or a Buick or a Volkswagen or a Rolls Royce. That's for you to do. There is infinite, unconditioned God, and there is individualized God. And I've got some news for you that may be good and bad, depending on how you relate to it. You are God individualized as you. So say, I am God individualized as me. I know that's a little heavy for the theologians, but this is what Jesus meant when he said, I and my Father are one. The infinite, all-encompassing God. And then, within this infinite, all-encompassing God, or encompassing God, there are individualizations. And each person is an individualization 
of the infinite God, and each person is responsible for his own thought and for his own self-concept. And the infinite God is not going to choose for you. In the Bible, we hear the infinite God saying, Choose you this day whom ye shall serve. So you've got some choices to make as you look into the crystal ball of your mind. It must be clear that you have choices to make. It must be clear that what's to be is up to you. And you have to choose whether you want to be rich or poor. What's your choice? You don't convince me. What's your choice? All right, look into the miracle crystal ball right now. Come on, you're looking into it. And say right now, I look into the miracle crystal ball. And I choose to be rich. And I see myself rich, rich, rich. In every way. Greetings, everyone. Are you still taking care of your human body feel, sell your malfunctions from an outdated health care system? Why not shift out of chronic disease care, stress, pharmaceuticals, vaccines, and surgery, and step up to energetics, epigenetics, and quantum health and healing with me. Step up and take control of your health journey. I offer you one free human body field voice scan from your computer or phone. Instant access to your scan results and more free quantum health information. For more details, visit ConsciousSelfCare.com. C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S-E-L-F-Care.com. Or call Karen Khadija Davis, folks, 202-248-7749. Yes, it's time to be your own wellness doctor. That was a great show. I want to thank you so very much for tuning in to the Conscious Self Health Care Conversation Radio Show right here on NLI Radio. It was a pleasure having you tuning in. Now, you must tell a friend to tune in. And if you haven't called in and shared your wellness story, don't you think it's time that you help somebody with your wellness story? Call in. Share your story. Join the conversation. I'm Karen Khadija Davis, folks, and I invite you to visit my website, ConsciousSelfCare.com. Or you can just go to the number four, the word C-E-L-L-L-I-F-E dot com. Leave me some information. I would love to talk with you. And once again, I look forward to you joining us next Wednesday right here on the Conscious Self Health Care Radio Show. It's a conversation where we uplift each other, where we share our wellness stories so we can help someone move from disease care to conscious self-health care. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to hearing from you next Wednesday. 